Teacher Kenny's English for Everyone. I hope you've been checking out the pronunciation video course, and we're starting just to get into lots of random different kinds of uh, topics. And we're going to do lots of things with pronunciation, listening, speaking. Um, so just get ready and hang on. Uh, today, we're going to start, uh, and we'll do probably several of these. We're going to start an exercise in speaking that's called shadowing. Um, and shadowing has been around for a long time, and it's a hot topic uh, among the English teachers. Uh, I had a lot of success with it when I was in China. Uh, and I'm going to kind of tell you uh, how I did it in China uh, and how it can work for you. But I think originally the shadowing technique was designed to help people reduce their accent. Uh, you know, if you're from India or China or whatever, sometimes you have a really, really strong accent and people just can't understand you even though you're speaking English. So what you got to do you got to learn how to speak like the native speaker like me. You know, if you're going to learn a language, you need to talk to somebody. You need to learn from somebody that is a native speaker. You know, if I, if I go to India and I want you to teach me your language, I, I, want to, I want you to teach me. I don't want some dude here in America that's never been to India to tell me how to do things. Uh, but anyhow, uh, but if you mimic, and that's the idea of shadowing, is you're going to follow me speaking just in a normal voice, uh, and you're going to be repeating after me and trying to say the words just like I do. Uh, and what that is, that's going to cut into your accent, and you're going to try to start sounding more like a native speaker. So that, and that's the idea. That's why you're learning English. Uh, you want to be understood, you know, you want to sound like the other people speaking English. Uh, so there's lots of advantages for you. Uh, now one thing with shadowing, uh, there are many ways to do it and you can read about it. There's lots of videos on shadowing. Uh, the first thing you need to do, you got to find the topic. And today we're going to be working with a, a poem by a very famous uh, poet uh, named Robert Frost. And that's a good place to start, is with a simple poem. Uh, but you need to have a simple, your topic needs to be simple, something that you know you can follow. And when you see even this poem, as simple as this poem is going to be, the first thing you do, you look, you look at what your material and make sure that you understand every word in that material. If there's any new vocabulary, you need to stop and learn your new vocabulary first. That's the first thing. And you, you need a good audio source. Uh, if you can record your voice as you do this, like with your telephone, uh, we used to have a computer uh, telephone, which I, I actually had a little recording uh, tool in China. Uh, and we worked all this stuff together. And what you're gonna see in this video here in a minute is I got this poem broke down into sections. I'm going to say it two times and for you to try to follow me. And that, but what you need to do, now you got to listen careful, you need to find the, the material that you're going to use. Like I said, today we're using this poem. You need to listen to me say this poem five, six, seven, eight times. Follow those words before you ever try to really speak them, okay? You need to become totally familiar with the words and how I say them, and it will make you easier to follow me. Um, but other than that, like I said, there's, there's so many ways that you can do this technique, but the main thing, if you can record yourself, that is good. But you need the material, you need to become familiar with the material, and make sure you know every word. Never, never, never guess, okay? Never guess at your vocabulary. Uh, but what we'll do, uh, we're about to go to the poem. Uh, just listen to me say it. Almost like I said, I'm saying it twice. And you, and, but play it several times. Just 
take the little clip and go several times. Then you can start trying to speak with me. I go through the whole, whole poem. Uh, then at the end, you're going to see the whole poem together in a little video that I made a while back. So anyhow, get ready, and we'll start learning a little bit about shadowing, okay? Uh, this will work for you, but you gotta you got to do what I say, okay? So here we go. Let's go take a look at Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. So get ready. Here we go. Okay. Now we'll start working with our poem. Uh, I have it broke down into little sections. I will say it two times each, each little section, and you just start trying to repeat after me. Now you need to listen to this several several times okay uh, I recommend no less than five or six times uh, listening to these passages uh, but we'll start at the beginning are you ready stopping by woods on a snowy evening by Robert Frost whose woods these are I think I know his house is in the village though he will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. All right. Again, listen really close to how I say the words. If I say it too slow, it, it will not be right for you. You need to listen at a normal pace and listen to my pronunciation and listen to my diction. Okay. So one more time. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. Okay, now let's look at the second passage. And again, listen to, to it several times. But here we go. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. Okay, now follow me. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. All right, now we'll move on to the third passage. Here we go. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. This one, I always thought this passage was a little bit tougher. All right, here we go again. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. All right, now we'll move on to the end of the poem. This is the last passage in the poem. Just follow me. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. All right, now work on this poem. Say it as many times as you can. Follow me. Then at the end of the video, you'll get to see the whole poem uh, and you can work with that, okay? Uh, but this is part one of the shadowing thing and it, it takes a little work but you'll notice if you listen to me carefully 
uh, your pronunciation will start getting better and maybe your accent will start uh, slipping away a little bit because the one of the points of shadowing is to neutralize your accent uh, these are exercises that lots of actors use to help uh, sound more American you know if, if they're from another country so anyhow have a great day and we'll see you with the next lesson take care bye bye Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep.